Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing six financial data and exchange stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Become a member of the channel for 99 cents to support the channel or up to $99 and we can do a private Zoom session to talk about financials. See the link in the very top of the description. The first company we're going to look at is CBOE. It owns the Chicago Board Options Exchange and the stock exchange operator BATS Global Markets. It was founded in 1973 by the Chicago Board of Trade. In March 2010, the CBOE filed paperwork to launch an IPO and began trading on the NASDAQ. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company. Their market cap is $9.8 billion, so that's the value of the company according to the stock market. They're trading at almost $90 a share, and they have 109 million shares outstanding. To get shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if you have positive free cash flow, then you can pay down debt, pay out dividends, acquire other companies, and invest back into your business to grow it. If you have negative free cash flow, you might not be able to do any of those things. And if a company has positive free cash flow, that means it's generating more cash than it's spending. This company has positive and growing free cash flow each year. That looks really good. That's what you want to see when you invest in a company. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And this company has positive and growing net income. So that looks really good as well. And their revenue is growing a lot. It goes from 700 million to 2.5 billion. So it triples in three years. So everything looks pretty good so far. Let's look at the capital structure. $868 million of debt. They pay 4.17% interest on their debt and cost of debt is 3.09%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they only have 21% debt in their capital structure, which means they have 79% equity. The cost of equity is 6.16%, and we use the capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. The beta is the volatility of the stock. The higher the beta, the higher the cap M. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity. And they have a pretty low beta, 0.5. The market as a whole has a beta of one. So 0.5 means the stock moves about half what the market moves. And their WAC is 5.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate companies use when they want to make financial decisions. They use the WAC to discount future cash flows for a project to see if they want to take that project on or not. This is the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 19.7 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $17.9 billion. We divide that by 109 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 164. They're trading at 90, so they're trading at a 45% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $94, so they're saying it's a little undervalued to stock, a bit different than my valuation. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it seems like the stock peaked in the 130s or 140s a few years back, but it's been dropping ever since. It is pretty steady, but it seems like it could be a really good value. Stock prices are based off of supply and demand of the market. It's not based off of how well a company does. If more people want to buy a stock, it will push the price higher and higher, even if the company is doing poorly. And if more people want to sell a stock, it's going to push the price lower and lower, even if the company is doing well. Let's look at the financial ratios. 
they don't have such a great PE. The median for the market is 16.7, the average is 18.6. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 26.3. Investors are paying $26.30 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is a little high. The median is 2.0, the average is 4.8. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 3.9. So investors are paying $3.90 for $1 revenue. Price to book is pretty good. The median is 2.4, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.9. So investors are paying $2.90 for $1 book value. Equity is on the balance sheet. It's total assets minus total liabilities. Interest coverage ratio is really good. The median is 4.1, the average is 13.5. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 16.2, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's on the income statement called operating income. ROE is a little low. The median is 13%, the average is 15%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 11%. They have a pretty good current ratio. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but 2.2 is fine, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on CME, Intercontinental, Moody's, MSCI, NASDAQ, OTC Markets, and S&P, all in the same industry as CBOE. And if CBOE has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are better in PE. Even though they don't have a great PE, they are better than the average. They have the best price of sales of all the companies. They're much better than average in price to book. Current ratio is a little higher than average. ROE is much lower than average, so they're not doing good there. Debt, they're much lower than average at 21%. The average in the industry is 48%. And they're much lower market cap at only 9.8 billion. The average is 38 billion. And they pay a higher dividend. Their dividend yield is 1.88%. The average is 1.4%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 45% discount. Their ratios look pretty good and their financials look really good. The second company is CME Group. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange is a global derivatives marketplace. The CME was founded in 1898 as a Chicago Butter and Egg Board, an agricultural commodities exchange. Originally, the exchange was a nonprofit organization. It went public in December 2002 and merged with the Chicago Board of Trade in July 2007. In August 2008, it merged with the New York Mercantile Exchange and COMEX. CME, CBOT, NYMEX, and COMEX are now markets owned by CME Group. After the merger, the value of the CME quadrupled in a two-year span with a market cap of over $25 billion. Today, CME is the largest options and futures contracts exchange in the world. The Merck trades several types of financial instruments, including interest rates, equities, currencies, and commodities. Let's get started with the model. They have a big market cap of almost $60 billion. They're trading at 167 a share, and they have 359 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. Free cash flow looks great. It goes from 1.6 billion to 2.4 billion, so they have lots of cash to work with. Net income also looks really good. 1.5 billion, it jumps up to 4 billion but falls to 1.9 billion, then 2 billion, but still looks really strong. Their revenue also looks good and growing. It goes from 3.6 billion to 4.9 billion. So financials look really good. They have $3.7 billion of debt. They pay 4.76% interest on their debt, and the cost of debt is 3.74%. 
They only have 13% debt in their capital structure, which means they have 87% equity. Cost of equity is 4.78%, and they have a low beta, 0.32, so the stock moves about one third of the market. It's a low volatile stock. And the WAC is 4.65%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 123 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $111 billion. We divide that by 359 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price at $311. They're trading at $167. So they're trading at a 46% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is in the other direction. They're saying the stock is only worth $107. Quite a big difference from my valuation. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. The stock peaked about 220 a year or so ago, but it's been dropping, which makes sense because the market is a little risky at this point. But according to my model, it's a really good value. According to Simply Wall Street, it's a really bad value. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE and price to sales, but they have a good price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. They're at 28.3. Price to sales is stock price of a sales per share. They're at 12.3. And price to book is stock price of a book value per share. They're at 2.3. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense. They're at 14.5. Low ROE, that's net income over equity, they're only at 8%. Current ratio is decent, that's current assets over current liabilities, they're at 1.0, so they can almost cover their current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on CBOE, ICE, Moody's, MSCI, NASDAQ, OTC Markets, and S&P, all in the same industry as CME. And if CME has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are a little better in PE, a little worse in price of sales. They have the best price to book of all the companies, probably because they have so little debt. Their current ratio is a little worse than average. ROE is much worse than average. They're much lower in debt at only 13%. The average is 48%. Market cap is really big. It's one of the biggest at 59 billion. The average is 39 billion. And they pay a higher than average dividend. Their yield is 2.07%. The average is 1.4%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 46% discount. Their ratios look decent, but their financials look really good. The third company is Moody's. Moody's was founded in 1909 by John Moody to produce manuals of stats related to stocks and bonds. Moody's was acquired by Dun & Bradstreet in 1962. In 2000, Dun & Bradstreet spun off Moody's as a separate company and listed it on the New York Stock Exchange. Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, owns 13% of Moody's. Moody's makes money by issuing credit ratings for debt securities. If a company wants to raise debt, it pays Moody's and S&P a fixed fee to rate the debt. Let's get started with the model. Also a really big company, 52 billion market cap. They're trading at 280 a share and they have 188 million shares outstanding. Free cash flow looks pretty good. It's fairly steady, 1.1 billion grows to 1.6 billion. Net income is growing each year. It starts at 267 million and goes to 1.4 billion. And their revenue grows every year. So everything looks pretty good and their margins are great. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. The higher your expenses, the lower your net income and the lower your net profit margin. This company is doing a good job at managing expenses. They only converted 7% of their revenue in 2016 to profit, but in 2018 and 2019, they converted 29% of their revenue into profit. They're doing a better job at managing expenses. They have $5.6 billion of debt. 
they pay 4% interest on their debt and cost of debt is 3.18%. They do have a lot of debt, 90% debt, which means they're 10% equity. Cost of equity is 11.08%. And we need the beta to figure that out. The beta is the volatility of the stock. So the stock is a little more volatile than a market. The market has a beta of 1, this has a beta of 1.14. Their WAC is 4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $33 billion. We divide that by 188 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 176. They're trading at 280, so they're trading at a 59% premium. It's a strong sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 245, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued, but not nearly as much as me. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock price seems to go higher and higher. Even coronavirus cannot stop this stock. It's almost at its all-time high. It looks like it's overvalued, but the market dictates the price. Regardless of what it's worth, if the market thinks it's worth more, it will bid the price up. Let's look at the financial ratios. They don't have such a good PE, price of sales, or price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. They're at 37. Price to sales is stock price of a sales per share, they're at 10.9. Price to book is stock price of a book value per share, they're at 85.9. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense, they're at 9.2. Really good ROE, that's net income over equity, they're at 232%. And a good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities, they're at 1.9. The best way to look at ratios to compare them is similar companies. I've done videos on CBOE, CME, ICE, MSCI, NASDAQ, OTC, and S&P, all in the same industry as Moody's. And if Moody's has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So in terms of PE, price of sales and price of book, they're much worse than the average. They're doing good in current ratio. ROE, they're killing it. They have a lot of debt, much more than the average. They are bigger than average in market cap. They're a really big company, 53 billion. Their dividend yield is low at 0.8%. The average is 1.4%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 59% premium. Their ratios don't look so great, but their financials look pretty good. The next company is MSCI. MSCI is an American finance company headquartered in New York City and serving as a global provider of equity, fixed income, hedge fund, and multi-asset portfolio analysis tools. The MSCI Global Equity Indexes have been calculated since 1969 and include MSCI World and MSCI FE. The company uses the following factors in developing its indexes. Momentum, volatility, value, size, growth, liquidity, and leverage. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $29.5 billion. They're trading at $353 a share, and they have 84 million shares outstanding. Free cash flow looks really good. It's positive and growing. Same thing with net income, and also revenue looks good. So their financials look really good. They also have good profit margins, they're improving each year. $3 billion of debt, they have negative equity. They pay 4.8% interest on their debt, cost of debt is 3.9% and they're 100% debt. Their bait is below 1, so the stock isn't volatile. Cost of debt is the WAC, 3.89% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 12 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $13 billion. We divide that by 84 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 156. They're trading at 353. They're trading at 126% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at 179, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. 
The stock was trading in the 150s a few years back, but the price has been going up and up ever since. It's at a really high point. It does look like it's overvalued. Let's look at the financial ratios. They don't have a good PE, price to sales or price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share, they're at 52. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 19. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, that's negative because they have negative equity. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense, they're at 5.1. They have negative ROE. A good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities, they're at 2.3. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on CBOE, CME, ICE, Moody's, NASDAQ, OTC, and S&P. All in the same industry as MSCI. They're worse in every ratio except current ratio. They're the highest in current ratio, 2.3. So to summarize, I have them trading at 126% premium. Their ratios look really bad, but their financials look good. NASDAQ is the next company. The NASDAQ composite is a stock market index. Along with the Dow Jones and S&P, it is one of the three most followed stock market indices in the U.S. The composition of the NASDAQ composite is heavily weighted towards companies in the IT sector. The NASDAQ is a cap-weighted index. The NASDAQ runs its business on fees. Companies pay a listing fee to appear on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Investors pay transaction fees to trade, and users pay service fees to access market data, products, filing, and corporate services. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $20 billion. They're trading at $124 a share, and they have 164 million shares outstanding. Free cash flow looks pretty good. It goes from $600 million to $800 million. It's pretty steady. Net income also looks pretty good and steady. Their revenue does grow from 2016 to 2019, but falls from 2018 to 2019. They have $3.4 billion of debt. They pay 3.4% interest on their debt. Cost of debt is 2.6%. They have 38% debt in their capital structure, so they have 62% equity. Cost of equity is 8.2%. We need the beta to calculate the cost of equity, and that beta is 0.77, so the stock moves less than the market. Their WAC is 6.11% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year four, that's 17.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 16.7 billion dollars. We divide that by 164 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 102. They're trading at 124, so they're trading at a 22% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is pretty close to what I'm calculating. They're at 106, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where it's been trading at the past few years. Similar to the other companies, the stock price keeps going higher and higher, so it's almost at its all-time high, so it does look like it's overvalued. Let's look at the financial ratios. They don't have such a great PE price to sales or price to book, although it's not terrible. PE is stock price over earnings per share, they're at 26.4. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 4.8. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 3.6. They do have a good interest coverage ratio that's EBIT over interest expense, they're at 9.4. Their ROE is a little low, that's net income over equity, they're at 14%. Decent current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities, so they can almost cover their current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on CBOE, CME, ICE, Moody's, MSCI, OTC, and S&P. All in the same industry as NASDAQ. If NASDAQ has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book compared to the average. Current ratio is a little below average. ROE is a lot below the average at 14%, average is 29%. Debt, they're doing better than average. They're a big company, but their market cap is smaller than the average, and they pay a higher dividend than the average at 1.6%, average is 1.4%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 22% premium. Their ratios look okay, and their financials look pretty good. 
The last company is S&P. Its primary areas of business are financial information and analytics. Most of its revenue comes from rating bonds. Let's get started with the model. This is a really big company, 85 billion market cap. They're trading at 353 a share and they have 241 million shares outstanding. Free cash flow looks really good, 1.3 billion to 2.7 billion. So they have lots of cash remaining to grow their business. Net income is strong and steady at 1.5 billion to 2.1 billion a year. Revenue looks really good. It's growing every year, 5.7 billion to 6.7 billion. They have $4 billion of debt. They pay 5% interest on their debt and cost of debt is 4%. They're a bit leveraged, 89% debt. So they have 11% equity. Cost of equity is 10.2%. We need the beta to figure that out. The beta is the volatility of the stock. Their stock moves the market. Their beta is 1.03. The WAC is 4.6%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 42.6 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $49 billion. We divide that by 241 million shares. We get a calculated stock price at 203. They're trading at 353, so they're trading at a 74% premium. It's a strong sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 290. They're also saying the stock is overvalued, just not as much as me. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. The stock price has doubled in the past five years. It's trading at its all-time high. Let's look at the financial ratios. Not such a great price to earnings, price to sales, or price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share, they're at 40. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 12.7. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 177. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense, they're at 16. Really good ROE, that's net income over equity, they're at 443%. Good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities, they're at 1.5. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on CBOE, CME, ICE, Moody's, MSCI, NASDAQ, and OTC. All in the same industry as S&P. And if S&P has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse in PE, price to sales, and price to book. Current ratios, they're doing fine. ROE, they're doing really well like Moody's over 100%. Debt, they're really high at 89%. They're the biggest company of the bunch at 85 billion market cap. They pay the lowest dividend. Their dividend yield is 0.77%. So to summarize, I've been trading at 74% premium. Their ratios are a bit weak, but their financials are okay. So leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Become a member of the channel for as little as 99 cents to support the channel or as high as $99 and we could do a private Zoom session where we discuss financials. Thanks for watching.